Okay, guys. Today, my friend Sarah Brown, um, she moved back to Stillwater in 2019, and and I uh, kind of got to know her then. She has Stillwater roots. She didn't uh, wasn't born here, but has a lot of Stillwater roots, and she has a real passion to get a children's museum uh, up and running here in Stillwater. And, and you're going to tell she's real passionate about this, and she's got some really cool things to share. So, uh, everybody, Sarah Brown. <laughs> Make sure I get this right, my first test. So yeah, uh, my name is Sarah Brown. I'm the executive director for Still Wonder. Um, and today I'm gonna explain a little bit about what Learn Through Play is, why it's important, and what Stillwater can do to help get a part of that. So, so the concept of learning through play, it's pretty simple. It's just experiencing some type of fun, joy, meaningful activity through play with the benefit of learning. And so every stage of development from zero to three, there are specific areas that you can get a, a true benefit from the learn through play. And one of the best things that you, you take away from it is problem solving, creative thinking, st stuff along those lines. But um, I love the Lego Foundation. They've got great information if you're curious on why we're pushing for this learn through play and how it can benefit, especially the zero to five age range. Uh, the Lego Foundation is awesome and I'm happy to share any literature or data that supports that. And to take it to the next level, um, a children's museum structure was created to help engage and to get that learn through play model. So you're looking for a creative, playful, interactive learning experience. And the joy about it is not only are you getting to watch children as they are learning and growing and developing, you get to play along with them. So um, I like it that it's, um, I like their wording here. It's because it provides a place where all kids can learn through play with the caring adults in their lives. So we're not just talking about parents. We're talking about foster parents. We're talking about grandparents. We're talking about so many opportunities. I take my cousin's kids to it as well. I mean, this can impact everybody within the community with a children's museum um, structure. And so why am I here and why do I care? So to explain a little bit about me, so I am an OSU grad. I have Stillwater roots. My cousins were all raised here. My mother was born here. Um, I moved back in 2019 from the Boulder, Colorado area just because of family reasons and Stillwater was kind of, we'd always been coming back and it was looking like it was time for us to come back permanently. So both my husband and I are full-time remote. Um, I work for an aerospace company out of Florida. Uh, I do their government contracts. So I'm like a glorified grant writer. So I've got that skill in my pocket to help advance this. but. Uh, uh, Still Wonder is my side hustle currently, um, and I'm trying to give as much time as I can. We've got a board developed and everything, um, and we just finalized our board of advisors, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I'm a recent grad of Leadership Stillwater, if you guys know what Leadership Stillwater is. Uh, 32, I salute you, I got some of my peeps here. Um, but most importantly, I'm a wife, uh, I, I love my husband most of the time, uh, and a mother uh, of a very, very active newly five-year-old. And he's why I care. Um, so a little bit about our story is we moved here, and one of the reasons we actually moved here was because of the Wondertorium. We had heard that there was a children's museum. To have that in this type of market was very exciting to us, so it was one of the reasons we chose Stillwater over some of the other areas that we could have moved back to. Um, enter COVID and some other issues, and we lost the Wondertorium. Um, since then, I never actually got to go. Um, the only time I've been is actually, it is still kind of a time capsule. It is still out there, all the stuff's still in it. Um, and I've been able to experience that, but I find myself spending a lot of money outside the state, outside the city, making sure that my son gets this learn through play experience. And to see the joy in his face, it is just, it, it's something that you can't, you can't put a price tag on. And we've, I mean, we go to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, uh, Arkansas has an amazing children's museum. Uh, everywhere you go, we plan our trips now based on do they have a children's museum or not. And that is one of the criteria that we now travel. And it's, it's just become a part of our lives. So how do you get kids learning through play now? So I was, I'm, I'm done. I think we deserve it here in Stillwater. And so in April of 2023, I filed my IRS paperwork and uh, I was accepted about the October timeframe, and so we are legit, we can take money. 
Um, but we are trying to bridge that gap of the learn through play model. Um, so our mission is to bring the community together in an immersive, innovative, and inclusive space where everyone can find the fun in learning. And so we've got our little pictograph. It's got our, our key focus areas, but always at the center of it is fun. So not only will my kid and everyone else's kids uh, get to benefit from a children's museum through the power of play, uh, but it also provides a lot of community benefits and community opportunities through having a children's museum in town. Everything from some of the biggest uh, benefits I heard were foster care, um, places to play, and special nights. You're looking at DHS site visits. It puts it in a safe space where parents can actually feel comfortable and be able to play with their children. It was a huge benefit. And even things like custody transfers where just a divorced couple is trying to pass from one to the other and it gives them a, a safe, fun place where their kids can feel a little bit more relaxed in a comfortable setting that they are used to. Uh, it also has a huge socioeconomic benefit for, um, or economic benefit for Stillwater and surrounding areas because of not only job creation, but it is bringing in income. You are looking at, um, I think uh, Christy told me at Leadership Stillwater, or uh, with Visit Stillwater, that one of the number one questions you get when people are coming to town are, what do you have for kids? And so this is something that we can offer to the community, and especially with, we're trying to go for tournaments and conferences. This will give an extra benefit for people coming to town to be able to bring their kids and bring revenue into the, the city. And a number one for me is it's a great place to volunteer. So it, the Wondertorium was a huge volunteer database last time. And to be able to open it up for not only high school students, uh, college, I'm already in talks with OSU, they're putting me into the volunteer database. Um, I'm gonna be able to have signups through there, even for the pop-ups to be able to get this out to the community. It's just a great way to engage, not only with the youth that's being uh, learning through play and moving on up, but to be able to give back in a, a volunteer capacity. And we're ready to learn through play. We have the stuff. So I have been in uh, discussions with Stillwater Public Schools and it's all mine. I just have to get it out. And so in dark alleys at like seven o'clock at night on a Friday after all the kids are gone, I, I wheel up my truck and I fill stuff up and I take it away slowly. Um, my garage, uh, I've been told I cannot bring anything else home yet. <laughs> But we have partnered with Lou at the Botanic Gardens, and he is helping me get a shed out there, which is wonderful. We're very grateful. And um, it'll, we're hoping to get more and more out. So if you see the cow in there, who went to the Wondertorium? Who knows Maggie? One of our hashtags is free Maggie. We're trying to get her out. We're trying to get her in the community. I may put her on a parade float. I'm really excited to get her back and to get her uh, being played. So we are, we're popping up everywhere. So um, the Botanic Garden, uh, the OSU Botanic Gardens we have partnered with. We're gonna have the fourth Saturday of every month we will be out there in their new horticulture center or somewhere across the property doing pop-ups with some of the Wondertorium stuff as well as some new stuff that we are procuring. Um, there's also the opportunity to expand, which is really exciting. We just had a booth, uh, if anybody went to the Home and Garden Show, we had an interactive booth there where uh, kids and uh, grandparents, everybody was out there playing. I think the adults enjoyed our um, painter's tape uh, ex exhibit more than the kids did. So that was really fun. And then uh, we're finishing out the month strong. If you're going to the Urban Succulent Fest, we will be running the Mud Kitchen, which we do quite often. And so that's a great example of learn through play where the kids go out there and they make mud pies and play in the kitchen and get all dirty and then I send them home. But, uh, and then last but not least, we'll be having a booth at Kaleidoscope. And so what's next for us? So right now we're in our short term phase. This is our first level of fundraising. We're doing pop-ups, events, just trying to get our name out there, trying to get out to the community to show the value of learn through play. And um, just kind of make sure that everybody understands this is the concept that we're looking for. Next step is a proof of concept, so we'll be looking for a short-term location to be able to really show what we're capable of to the community, and then the long-term goal is a permanent location. So how can you help bring the wonder back? So right now, monetary donations. That's what we're looking for to start off, especially with these pop-ups, to get not only the stuff out of the Wondertorium, but us back in business as far as new supplies, cleaning. It's amazing how much cleaning I have to do for these things. Um, but yeah, so monetary donations. I've got our website, 
QR code up here, as well as I've got business cards and um, flyers on your tables, please take. Um, that'll give you a little bit more information and our website will be updated. I think it'll be Friday with our new campaign and all of our data of what we've been up to. One of the biggest I can also uh, request is in-kind donations. If you like to help move stuff or you know people that do, hey, I'm, I'm all game. Um, one of the biggest things as well is um, if you're handy, I am not super handy. Um, I, I, have to, like, I have to beg to have people to put things on wheels or make it to where I can modulate these um, exhibits to be able to get them out to the public. So if you have skills of that, or if you just have a location that you're like, hey, nothing's going on here, if you would be willing to let us look at our short or our midterm uh, proof of concept, that's also what we're looking for. Um, event volunteers. So we should have our volunteer website up open through OSU next week and you can go on and we'll have all of our different areas that are looking for volunteers um, to get out and help us get those kids playing. And then awareness, share our, share our Facebook, share our Insta. I'm learning Instagram. Uh, I'm getting kind of savvy at it. I'm kind of proud of myself. I can learn new things too. Um, but we are, hmm? I do, I do. I really enjoyed this exercise. Now I'm all like, oh, I'm taking away notes. I was like, I need to have exercises on your tables next time so you can learn through play. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to get the word out and see what we're doing. We're pretty early in this process, but uh, our goal, our motto was get kids playing now, and that's what we're trying to do with the pop-up. So uh, I really appreciate the time, and thank you guys. And I really think that we, we really could use this Children's Museum for our community. And with your help, hopefully we can bring the wonder back. So, yeah. Any questions? Am I allowed to do questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was over in Enid not too long ago, and oh my gosh, I, I, I knock your socks off. A beautiful child, a children's museum. Exactly. How do they pay for it? So they have a very, um, so one of the core successes for a children's museum to survive is an endowment. And so they have a very, very robust endowment that has, I think, a, I've been in talks with their executive director, also Jasmine Moran, down at, I think it's Seminole. That is the key to be able to long-term sustain children's museums, especially when you have things like a COVID come up. It helps keep you along until you can survive through, through the hardship. So. so what needs to happen for us to get a building for you? I mean, is it money? It, is it more money, staff? Is it mainly money? All of it, yeah. So money is our big kicker right now. So money and then a location. So right now I'm in talks with a lot of organizations for a potential donated building. That helps us get it quicker. So if anybody is sitting on a lot out there, to let me know. But um, we're also, there's a couple. Oh, I know somebody in this room is sitting on a lot. <laughs> but good question. Thanks, uh, Board of Advisors. Bless. Hey, Sarah. Flick back to your picture that showed the collection from the Wonditorium. You can do it. Go on back. It's trying. Oop. Maybe we went past it. Oop. It's on. Nope. One more. Keep going. What I'm I wanted hit to it again. <laughs> there you go. The bottom picture of the boat, that was a rotary project. And that is the USS Rotary. Aww. And that was, a, that was a district grant through our Rotary District and the three Aww. Rotary Clubs of Stillwater. Okay? So we already have a connection. Maybe you want to bring us another project. <laughs> I do, actually. So it's funny. So the, the boat is one of the one things that they want out now because it is keeping up, it's taking up a great deal of space. And so it was one of the, it's one of the larger items that I'm planning on freeing this summer. So hmm, I'll be in touch. <laughs> I know I'm right here, but I'm speaking of this. So can you tell us a little bit more about your partnership with the Botanic Garden at OSU? Yeah, so um, just to start out, it's pop-ups right now, but um, Lou has given me pretty much free reign to use the space anytime I want to. I'm looking at right now, it's just gonna be the fourth Saturday of the month just to get us started, but there is, I, I think there's a very good chance we'll be moving to the first, uh, no, it's the second Saturday as well. So depending on momentum, depending on fundraising, we'll expand. There's also talks that um, we will start doing a couple weeknights as well to start um, servicing more of our nonprofit groups 
be able to have play nights. So we're also looking at that. I've made a couple calls and connections already, so more to come on that. But also the partnership, it's more than just pop-ups. So Lou is actively, Lou at the Botanic is actively helping me to start my fundraising campaign as well as be my advocate for, for future growth. Any other? Got one more, Larry? So Stillwater has a number of pre-K and uh, uh, daycare centers, uh, schools, many of them run by churches. Uh, what are the possibilities for partnerships or collaboration with any or all of those units? Very strong. It's something that we will actively look. I have a son in, in preschool right now at one of the churches. So it's like the, the connection is great, especially to be able to come in and set up and let them play or them sponsor. There's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. One more question. On the second, on the 27th, I think, the Herb Kitchen, yeah. what time is that? So um, it's going to be all day. So we start at 9 o'clock uh, when the Urban Succulent Fest happens, and it goes to, um, we start cleaning up about 1.30 because the kids do get pretty messy. Um, is but it is over by, if so the Horticulture Center, why did you come in? If you look just right across the street, it'll be in like a, a wooded area. So if you hit the play, giant play structure, you've gone too far. So it's like right by that area. So right as you come in. Thank you. And it's fun. Sure. Any more? We still have time. We're early. I know you said you formed a board of directions, but a director, but are you now mainly a one woman team? <laughs> do you have anybody helping you? <laughs> Um, I do a lot of it at 3 a.m. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Oh, that's um, <laughs> so I, you laughed at me. Don't you laugh at me. Um, but no, I actually have a really good uh, group that I'm bringing in. Uh, I've been waiting for some strategic ones to roll off projects they've been working on. But no, I've, I've got several key board members that I just brought in. And my board of advisors, We now that we're becoming more uh, event-based, we've just uh, I put out my list of board of advisors and all but one is eligible and so I'll have that posted to my website as well. But yeah, I'm getting a lot of support from some great individuals in town. Awesome. Thank you very much.